Hey guys. I'm Jerry. I'm Sierra. We're ladies. And we tangent. Toilet paper. It's not toilet paper. Okay. <laughs> it's a paper towel. Oh. Sometimes I use paper towels for toilet paper. Ouch. Me I know. too, though. I know. If you run out, what are you supposed to do? Yep. My grandma today was like, do you have tissues? And I was like, I've never bought tissues. Never? Anyway, no. Uh, well, when I'm sick, that's it. And then I like forget that I need them. So like if someone's just like, I need a tissue for a regular thing, I should always use toilet paper. Oh. But I'm always done. <laughs> well, I normally pick my nose, so I don't have to worry about it. But I thought tissues were like a bougie thing. Like when I go in and I see tissues in every room, I'm like, so you in have every- money. <laughs> Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You're bragging. Yeah. I see. I see you. Every room? Yeah. Do they have, it, and then they're infused with aloe, and I'm like, okay. If it has like a cover on it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. No. For for what? who? You bought a coat for your tissues? <laughs> Couldn't be me. Just put it in the, the box wasn't good enough? You had to put the box in a box? <laughs> well. But also, that's honestly, I'll know I've made it. When I get to buy my tissues a coat. Yeah. Well, I, I'll know I made it when I get tissues. <laughs> I've got to start ordering some. Okay. Well, I just have a little fact. Oh, but we have to say hi. Oh, that's right. Okay. <gasps> What's, What's up, up everyone? everyone? Hello. Hello. Honestly forgot you were here. <laughs> I like. I was just like, let's start talking. I like uh, when people message us and start it that way. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it makes me laugh. Yeah, with like a lot of O's. Hello. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw a thing. Mm-hmm. That made me happy, and I cried because I have I have no idea what my emotions are going to do or when yeah. or when. When or when. <laughs> but when or when or check in dinner. <laughs> That's what I always say. I saw a little fact. First of all, Sorry, did you a know hair floating. Go ahead. in Kento, mm-hmm. the... The thing that I said that I loved so much when they all sing their parts at the same time and it like crescendos. Yeah. And that's called a madrigal. Did you know that's what the word is called? No. Which is their last name in the... Coming together to sing loudly? That, just like that, like where they're all singing their parts, but at the same time oh. kind of thing. The thing that Lin-Manuel Miranda does all the time. Wait, 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 wait. Huh. Around? I it's called around. I well, thought call, uh, some multiple people messaged me and was like, "That word you're looking for is a madrigal." And so well, I we looked need it to, up. We need to look that up. Fact <laughs> checker right now. I'm gonna Google it. Okay, because I know when you are singing around, we used to we used to sing "Danger Men at Work." Yeah, "Danger Men at Work." No, it's not at- that. Oh, yeah, but then like different people would start at different times. So it's a complex, polyphonic, unaccompanied vocal piece on a secular text. You lost me. <laughs> me too. <laughs> um, what's an example? A good example? Nope. I I don't know how to... What makes a song a madrigal? Um, you know what? I already... I'm on board. Sure. Okay. Musically, it's most often set polyphonic. Phonically, more right. than one voice part in two parts with the musical form reflecting the structure of a poem. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so whatever that is, is what he does. Multiple people must have me. I was like, fucking cool. But anyways, that's not what I wanted to say. Oh, I was like, honestly, I regret even trying to say that it was something else because <laughs> yes, now we're... that was like me mansplaining like, yeah. <laughs> something that I clearly have no fucking idea about. I was just what? like, I want to disagree. Mm, it's around. <laughs> yeah. Me thinks it's around. <laughs> Well, I family realized- round. <laughs> after, after I started saying it was around and singing Danger Men at Work to myself. That that's not the same thing that I they I realized do. it wasn't the same thing because you were saying they sing their own parts. Yeah, I was all saying at the same everyone time. sings the same. the same thing, but starting at different times. No, that's yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, that's around. Yeah. <laughs> if you were curious. Thank you. She's yeah. a music teacher, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what is cool is the person who did the voice for. Mirabel uh-huh. was like 40. Okay. First of all, crazy because um, she sounds so young. That's always yeah. crazy to me. Oh, the yeah. voice actors sound so, like teenagers. Yeah. And they're like in there. Anyways, she was pregnant while she was doing that. And she was literally in labor when she sang the song Waiting on a Miracle. Aww. And that made me cry because I was like, she was literally waiting on a miracle. Oh, wow. I know. 
And then she had her baby like a couple hours later. <gasps> do you, okay, do you have any, a couple hours later? Like geez, nine. Louise. <laughs> are or there, something, I don't know. I read it on an article. Still, yeah. I know where I was at mm. at that point mm-hmm. in labor and there's no way I could be singing, singing that song. No. No. I was so out of breath. <laughs> um, okay. Mm-hmm. Were there any songs when you were pregnant either time that you heard it and you like had a different perspective on it and so it made you emotional? Um, maybe. Yes. Okay. Do you know what it was? Um, <laughs> well, I was pregnant like 11 years ago. Well, no, yeah. So I mean so like just... if you remember one that stuck out or with Sawyer. By the way, Shane spelled Sawyer S-O-Y-E-R and I was like, <laughs> you adorable man. <laughs> You're wrong. But. I spelled it wrong the other day. I spelled it Sayer. <laughs> I was like, why am I get my daughter's name wrong? Well, just kind of transposed a couple letters. Yeah, it's that's fine. all right. Um, but recently with Sawyer, I I listened to the song "Praying" by Kesha Aww. because yes. you introduced that yep. to me when I was. But I don't think I was ready to fully like. Because when you introduced it, you're like, you're gonna cry. And remember, I had like, mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, that's a nice song. I wasn't really able to yeah. like let the there lyrics were so in. Many songs that I sent to Sierra where I'm like, cry. you're gonna cry at this. And it was cry. because I would be <laughs> sitting, I'm so dramatic. I'm the person who would like walk to my classes in college listening to music and then like toss my hair on the beat and like look side to side and like pretend like I else was could a, hear. <laughs> yeah, like pretending like I was in a music video just to like spice up my Wednesday. Yeah. But I remember listening to certain songs. Like there's another one um, by Kelly Clarkson I used yes. to listen to and yep. I sent it to you. I instantly know what you mean. And I remember being so overcome with emotion pretending to be you. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God, be Sierra for a minute and listen to this song. And you, this is your life. You are living as her. These lyrics hit fucking hard. Yes. And you were like, calm down <laughs> no but, but now but now so i listened to that song again actually recently and the part that always when i'm singing it out loud i praying choke up the kelly clarkson one praying okay when she says i'm proud of who i am mm-hmm. um and then no more monsters i can breathe again yep. and then the part that you said that i wait no not it's the part where she says um shit i just listened to it like yesterday Something like, oh, they won't even know your name. Oh, when I'm finished, they won't uh-huh. even know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were saying, um, the, and um, the part where it says, and you said that I was dumb. Yeah, that you were wrong. And now the best is yet to come. But there's a part yeah. too where it's like it says something about, um, I can tell what is the truth. See how much truth I can tell. Mm-hmm. 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 You brought the flames and you put me through hell. And then now we both know all the truth I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> No, but it was really, I was just like. We just recite the entire song. <laughs> anyway, this is so- a spoken word. <laughs> this is called a madrigal. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then also, mm-hmm. stepping away from sad songs. Wait, I didn't get to tell you mine. Oh, okay. Or did oh, you have oh, another oh. one? No, no, no. Go ahead. Okay. So, my, that was the whole reason I asked you in the first I'm place. So <laughs> to I talk about me. <laughs> I could have a turn. <laughs> Understandable. Okay. So, okay. You know Truly Madly Deeply by Savage Garden? Yeah. <gasps> my dad. Nope. I found another one. I, okay. You reminded me of that when you said Savage Garden. But anyway. So my dad, you, my dad is a big music guy. And so he would like buy DVDs, like concerts, mm-hmm. and then just blare them as loud as he possibly could. And so just, did like, my dad. take a nap. Why did my dad do that? I don't know. He could sleep through. Literally, it would yeah. make the house shake. Well, sometimes I would come home and I would hear a concert. It could be Usher. It could be Corn. It could be Savage Garden. It did not matter. This man did not discriminate. That is both of our dads. They, yeah. Their music choices, I'm like, okay. <laughs> All over. Yep. All over the gaff. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he would be downstairs just rocking out alone. But this one day I came home and he was just like, napping in the living room listening to savage garden (laughs) and the song truly madly deeply yeah i was listening to it on my way to work one day and i started sobbing because i was pregnant with ollie because the lyrics are like i knew i loved you before i met you i feel like i dreamed you into life and i was like oh my god (laughs) i always listen to that song from the perspective of like a romantic relationship right and then when it's you're like thinking about a child. Yes. Ugh. Especially because like of our miscarriages and thinking like I want 
I want this baby so badly. Yeah. I just, oh my God, every time. Instant waterworks. Yep. Okay, I have to look up the lyrics. Mine, okay. mine are not about like thinking about my baby. I guess it's just more so like after I came out of the, like I mm-hmm. could never, th- like I've said before, I can never think about the sad time that I'm in while I'm in it. I just like hardcore dissociate. Yep. Then when I'm out of it, I'm like, well, that was fucked up. <laughs> Me um, thinks that was bad. Yeah. I didn't have any songs for Forrest. And that's because 2020 was happening and there wasn't much to think about (laughs) at all other than just like staying alive and not (laughs) succumbing to my panic attacks. Exactly. Um, Okay. So the part or the, is this the song? Anyways, it was Matchbox 20 is the thing. Oh. But what song was it? Oh, oh, Matchbox 20. Mm -hmm. Was it Matchbox 20 or was it just, what the fuck is his name? Max? Mike? Is it 3 a.m.? Um, no. Thomas? What's his name? <laughs> Rob Thomas. Rob Thomas. Yeah. Bobbert Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby Tom. <laughs> Maybe it's on my Spotify because I was like freaking I'm listening to I'm not crazy. To I'm just, just a little, little unwell. Well. well, that's what I thought it was, but I don't think it's that song. This is the uh, uh, Name That Tune episode you guys are looking for. <laughs> I honestly hate myself right now for doing this to you. Well, they're not going to hear it as long as I have to listen to it. It's well, that's be... what I'm, I'm doing this to you. I'm oh, sorry. got it. Is it uh, the one with Santana? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think it's Bent. Bent? Yeah. So it says, if I fall along the way, pick me up and dust me off. And if I get too tired to make it, be my breath so I can walk. If I need some other love. Oh, no, wait. Maybe that's. A... Oh, oh, this is the part that I love. It says, if I need some other love, give me more than I can stand. And when my smile gets old and faded, wait around, I'll smile again. Aww. I know. I would sing that lyric when I came out of like a depressive episode and yeah. start bawling my Aww. fucking eyes. I, I feel like, like your dad loves Rob Thomas. Yeah. Well, my Aunt Lori did too. Aww. That was Matchbox 20 was her favorite. Yeah. So like her, my mom and my dad were all like friends when they were in high school. Mm-hmm. And I think they like right out of high school, they, they were all like, fucking Matchbox 20. Well, I always said that my dad's alter ego, Chad. Yeah. He really <laughs> loves Matchbox 20. <laughs> that makes and sense. And also Nickelback. <laughs> My dad actually did like Nickelback a lot. So does Shane. He's like, I stand by that. I don't think they're that bad. Hot take. I think that that was a thing to be cool, to hate on Nickelback. And I don't think they're as bad as people think they are. Look at this grass. (laughs) (laughs) Did we ever talk? Matcha lattes taste like grass. Matcha lattes? It's matcha. I cannot say that. Matcha? Yeah. Pacha. (laughs) That's from, (laughs) that's the go. Pacha pacha? Pacha. Pacha from the Poncha? Not the, I said go to my llama. <laughs> okay. From the, the Emperor's New Groove. Oh, okay. Pacha. The Pancha? Disney's New Emperor. <laughs> you know what? It's Where a are llama. We? <laughs> Wait, there was something else I have to say. I finished season seven of Love Island. Okay. So now I have to start on season one because you made me start at three, which I've I appreciate. I've still never watched season one. Oh, well, I was going to ask you if it gets better because it's awful. It is awful. This was me the whole, and maybe it takes me a little bit to get into it, any, but like, I was so into Love Island UK, and I'm like, these people are all so sweet and amazing. Oh, and Australia? These people? No, no. Love Island UK. Oh. Season one. Have you, you have seen to it? go. No, you, no, it sucks. You I know. Have to, I couldn't get through it. And it's so bad. I'm like, well, ugh, my friend Brittany I hate was telling people. me too that like, the, there was a lot more like recap episodes yeah. oh. than normal. And I was like, skip it. Yeah, I hate Freaking this. stop watching it. Have you seen season two? No. Okay, well then fuck it. I'm just going straight to Australia. Yeah, go to I, Australia. I can't handle these people. Right. I'm like, get ready to have the your guys- fucking accents mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm upset because I was really into the the European. Like, Don't I can't- worry, you'll also really like the Australian. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. But like I have started saying things and like- well, that's what I'm saying. It gets fucky. It gets hard. <laughs> it gets fucky. It gets hard. Yeah. Because there's like a, there's yeah. some overlap, but like. We're really far from not. Australia, aren't we? I feel like um, it would take like 20 hours on a plane or some shit to get uh, there, right? Yeah, for sure you couldn't walk there. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I know it's far. <laughs> <So>. Okay. <laughs> Well, that and there's <laughs> oceans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Well, I said something about I was like, I'd always want to go to Australia. And they're like, you hate planes. And I'm like, so? And they're like, that's like a 30-hour plane ride or something. I don't know. It was, it was an insane number. Sorry, to be I just on a started plane. thinking about uh, the oceans. Oh, why? And like if they were all dry, 
Like all of a sudden, all the oceans dried up. Yeah. We would just be. I <laughs> hope that's not what it would sound like. <laughs> that um, is what it would sound like. We would just be one big landmass. Well, we would be dead. That's oh. a fact. If the oceans sure, dried up immediately, mm, probably oh pretty quickly. <laughs> well, boys to men. Yeah. Change the name of your song to "If We Water Dry Up." Lands dry. Oh. <laughs> it's we'd be we'd be dead we would right i mean mm. am i wrong are you gonna tell me that i'm wrong <laughs> I, I i am a biologist or hank wait, green my marine biologist hank green <gasps> hank green um oh um, you um, see my problem is this uh uh dreaming away uh uh <laughs> <laughs> this is a thing yeah. oh baby it lies in like a crash oh it doesn't mean I'm serious. <laughs> so anyways. But too loose. <laughs> no, but too <sorry>. loose. <laughs> That's an Aristocat. <laughs> it is? Um, yeah, you have Toulouse, you have Marie, and you have what's the other what's the other one? <laughs> Toulouse was my favorite. Berlio Ber Berlios. <laughs> Berlios. <laughs> Something. I don't think that's right. Berlioz. It's Madrigal. No. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Okay. Okay. <laughs> What's happening? All business. No pleasure. This is ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I think I'm all pleasure. No business. <laughs> ladies and tangents. <laughs> ladies and pleasure <laughs> oh i know this is a great this time to bring up sex line <laughs> we've got a new sex toy line <gasps> we it's called go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> get fucked forever <laughs> hey, uh, this hit one, us up that's not a bad idea <laughs> i know when in doubt still do it out <laughs> Anyway, is anyone listening? <laughs> what was this thing on? <laughs> I could almost make some chocolate starfish. <laughs> oh my god! What's happening? Well, I don't know. Honestly, <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> we're off the rails. So we're doing. Am I the assholes? Am I the chocolate starfish? <laughs> See, we're not like a what do they call us—a wish version of two hot takes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is a totally different thing. Hundred percent. Did you see there was a guy? I'm sorry. This is kind of mean, and I feel bad if I bring it up and you haven't seen it. Oh, because I think I delete. I might have deleted. Is he the talking comment. shit about me? Both of us. He oh, called cool. us on Facebook. So one of our like scandal stories went like it had like six hundred thousand. Oh, some... is this the guy who's like, of course she has ADHD or no. anxiety? No, this Another guy one? said two frumps on a couch, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like. <laughs> Two frumps, one podcast. <laughs> Hit us up. That's our new yeah, one. One frump. It was fucking one podcast. I read that comment and instead of getting mad. I laughed out loud. I was like, "That's fucking hilarious." Coming yeah. from a guy with, guess what? He drives a no truck, doesn't he? Fucking profile pictures. He, he has a fish. All cars, all fish. He's all a cars. car. Yeah, and he called us frumpy, and I was like, "Let me see your face. Let me see your face. Guarantee you look like you smell like cheese." <laughs> Even if I am frumpy, I'm getting more ass than you. I don't care. No, I mean, I'm for sure frumpy. Like, that's <laughs> <laughs> obviously, but like. To me. That's cool. Like, like frumpy's kind of. The most frump interesting. Frump is the new hot. <laughs> frump is the new hot. Am I wrong? The most interesting thing about me is not my flesh suit. No. I'm that's f- what I always say. I- I'm frumptastic. Yeah. I like it. And it was. I feel bad because it definitely was from delicious mi- definition <laughs> makes them voice be mean to me. <laughs> I'll be honest, it was definitely me he was talking about because it was one of the episodes where I was just wearing like sweats and a and a gross hoodie and he could my- definitely also be talking about me. Yeah, let no, me, you no, looked let good. Me be the frump. No, I was definitely the frumpy I'm the one. Frump. <laughs> you they call me <laughs> Mrs. Frump. <laughs> Anyway, Mr. Fromtastic. So from 2024, <laughs> <laughs> vote me in, baby. Well, I'm gonna make men vice. illegal. <laughs> Hell yeah! No, I'm just kidding. But stop being fucking mean to strangers online, you weirdos. And also, having no panty lines is 
illegal. illegal. We want to see your underpants. <laughs> we do. Honestly. Put and them if, on. Stop getting yeast infections. Yeah. 2024. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. No more. And if you don't like wearing them, fine. But no. Nope, but I want how? To put them on. But how? how? What's happening with your discharge? <laughs> you. Me. You I'm don't. the discharge. <laughs> Sierra ends up in your underwear. <laughs> it's oh, me. Sierra stop my dog from eating my underwear yesterday she was like i didn't want to touch him because i didn't know <laughs> like what the situation was they were on the floor and i was like i'm confused <laughs> i was like these are definitely dirty so thank you <laughs> thank you for catching that <laughs> you shouldn't have touched those yeah um yeah anyway so frumps on a couch that's our new band <laughs> 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 hit me up yeah this is a love seat at best yeah so. yeah <laughs> We're not even on a We're full frumps side. on the love seat. So <laughs> fuck you, okay? <laughs> Don't insult my furniture like that. Yeah, you fucking asshole. Yeah. Oh my god, that's so funny. I fucking hate people. <laughs> but also it's really funny. And then it was it was the one Thanks for the engagement. Yeah, for real. It was the little Caesar one. Mm. And then somebody commented, another guy. Yeah. That one got like Two people being mean to a surprise. <laughs> well, Both were men. Who would have thunk? Yeah. But the one guy was like, is this supposed to be funny? And then another girl, before I could, commented underneath it, shout out to you if you see this because you're fucking awesome. And she goes, did you work at Little, Little Caesars? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that is hilarious. Long story short, no. No, it's not supposed to be funny to you. Everybody has a demographic. We're probably not yours. You. Well, I fucking... was going to say, no, it's not supposed to be funny. It just is. Yeah. I don't know what to tell you about that. Just Sorry like we're that... not supposed to be hot frumps, but we are. Yeah. This is what happens when I roll out of bed. <laughs> hot frump yeah. on the side. This is what happens when I cut my own hair. Yeah. Okay. Frumptastic. Yeah. Oh, my God. I love it. Shagalicious frump a dunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's my name <laughs> sitting on this love seat is my game yeah. i don't even remember what i just said talk that to was... me about being a starfish okay a chocolate I, one i'm sorry but you're really on a roll and you're being very funny right am now. i yeah i'm that's from because... <laughs> <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> no, keep it going <laughs> you are being funny though you're fucking hilarious okay Tighten up. <laughs> yeah. The people come here for our professionality. <laughs> That's <laughs> definitely a word. All right. Is professionality a word? Professionality is not a word. Wordle. Professionalism. Professionality. That's definitely more than five letters. <laughs> is sure. it five or six letters? Five. I don't play that game on principle. What? But you play hurdle? I do play hurdle and I got fucked today in Dude, it. Dude, I didn't know at all today. I listened to it and I was like, my friend Chase could have written this yep. song in his dorm room. Yep. Is this his band? <laughs> and then I got to the end and I'm like, it fucking could have been. It was Daft Punk. Yep. Yeah. Should have known. I anyway. was pissed. Okay. 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 Am I the puss hole? Am I the puss? <laughs> Sorry. I just want to get you <laughs> off guard. Am I the frump hole? <laughs> the chocolate frump hole. <laughs> Answer is yes. yes when in doubt, are. be the chocolate frump hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Hey guys. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that the eighth dwarf? Uh, dwarf? It's Snow White. And then it's the chocolate frumples. <laughs> frumples? Did you say frump holes or frumples? It's frumples tilt skin. <laughs> Oh, I was saying like sneezy, dark, dopey, frumpy. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> oh god! Uh, uh, I knew telling you was gonna go one of like we were either gonna get really sad about it or make it fun. So, I don't give a fuck. That's what I'm saying. Me neither. And I want you all who get like mean shit said to you on the internet to like. Well, I had. It's someone... so funny. It's so funny. I like, had someone today. People say... think we give a fuck. <laughs> we don't. I had someone today say to me, like, I'm really sorry that I let you down. And I go, you didn't let me down. Mm -hmm. And they were like, but I did. And I go, you didn't because I don't give you that power. No. like <laughs> You don't, don't have the power to let me down. No. You think that I give a shit? Like, yeah. I wish I did. I don't anymore. I I have the power. Yes. I've got the power. Mm. And it's frumpy. <laughs> and I'm a frump bitch. <laughs> 
Okay. Okay. Hey guys, my pronouns are she, her. Just wanted to start off with I adore you both and thank you so much for creating a safe space for people just to be themselves without judgment. However, I'd like to be judged now. (laughs) Part of me thinks I am not the asshole, but then the sensitive cancer side of me is saying I am. Wait, time out. You just said that we should judge her? Erica, this is our formal invitation for you to come on our podcast from the judges. Oh, yeah, yeah, Erica from the judges. We're talking to you. Yeah, we like the judges. And we we know a lot of you come here from the judges. So welcome. Hello. Let's do a chocolate starfish episode with Erica. A hundred percent. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. We haven't even asked you yet, but but what what are you saying? What are you saying? <laughs> um, okay, let me start from the beginning. So my best friend has found out she's pregnant, and I and I am so supportive of her. She is struggling with the pregnancy, which I completely understand, and have tried to be there to cheer her up and give her advice, which is pretty hard for me as I've never had kids before. So I'm guessing a lot of the time and trying to say the right thing. Side note: If I say the wrong thing, it's game over for me for the week. Oh, like she's withholding her friendship from you? Like she's mad at her, I guess. Okay. She's been really difficult to be around recently. She's constantly, she constantly is judging what I do. If I spend time with other people or go out partying, she tells me, you're 26 now. Should you not be attempting to settle down or tells me I'm overdoing it and it's embarrassing? Part of me is like, I wonder if both of you Uh, listen to the podcast. I know. We're going to like shit talk one of you. Well, if we do, we do. Yeah. Um... I'm just going to give my honest opinion. Yeah, and... There's two sides to every story. <laughs> Do you remember that song? No. Oh, it was the, um, the, you put me through pain. Oh, yes. Pain. Yes. Done and then with she was like, me. fuck you right back. Yes. yes. Oh, my God. Her like, song was way better. 13 year old me was like, fuck what I said. It, it don't mean shit me. now. Anyway. Fuck the presents. I threw all that shit out. <laughs> fuck you, you hoe. Because she was like... I'm not going to lie. When I did this, my fucking arm jiggled. I got really, really self-conscious of how much I was jiggling. Fuck it. Is this frumpy? (laughs) Frumpy enough for you? (laughs) Okay, I'm sorry. Fuck you, you ho. Wait, is that how it goes? Don't want you back. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. I've sort of distanced myself from her over the past couple weeks because this is making me feel super shitty and it made me fall into what can only be described as an existential crisis. She has noticed my distancing and now is calling me a bad friend when I brought up the fact that she hasn't been very nice. She just said I wouldn't get the hormones of going through pregnancy and if I can't support her, then fuck off. Okay. I feel bloody awful. Are you yeah. from the UK? I think so. I feel bloody awful now because it's true. I don't know what it's like to grow a whole human. But on the other hand, I do know what it's like for your best friend to make you feel shit about yourself. And I'd like and I'd like to I'd like that to no longer happen. Sorry, I could not figure out how that sentence was going to go. Here's where it gets juicy. I may have accidentally in a drunken moment had sexual intercourse with her cousin and she has found out. She isn't happy because one, I didn't tell her and two, I shouldn't be doing the nookie with her family members. Why? Yeah, exactly. Why? I almost just said I've never had sex with your cousins, but you're my cousin. So. Well, my cousins oh, have had sex. Yeah. <laughs> Different sides. <laughs> Different sides. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. Um. So I'm the weird. Yeah, yeah. she's the in in between. Yeah. I was not in between them. (laughs) I was not present. She was in the room making sure it was okay. (laughs) This is fine. Yeah. Um, One, I didn't tell her, and two, I shouldn't be doing it. Yeah, yeah. I can't lie, it was a blast, so I don't regret it, although it hasn't helped this tricky friendship right now. I didn't even want her to find out, but word gets around, you know? So, yes, am I the asshole? Are we both assholes? And ultimately, what the bloody hell do I do? Any help would be greatly received. Love you, too. Um, I don't think you're an asshole. I don't think so either. And I'm not going to say that your friend is an... No, well... I know! <laughs> it's hard. It's hard because Here's I know thing. this is As coming from two someone's people perspective. who have been pregnant, uh, like, eight times between the two of us. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, 
I get those hormones, but also ultimately those are your responsibility. You cannot yeah. keep lashing out at other people and, and, it and blaming is, it on the hormones. It is hard if you're younger too and you have like I remember when I was younger and all of my friends were going out and yep. doing stuff like I wanted to lash out and be pissy and be like, why aren't you staying home? Because I have to stay home every yeah. night. It's misplaced. Yeah. And that's not fair. That's not fair to those people. That's not fair to myself. Like mm -hmm. none of that. I can't put that onto other people just because I now can't go out and do things with mm -hmm. people. That's unrealistic and everybody's timeline is different so to say you're 26 you should be doing this this and this she can be fucking 40 if she wants and not settling down like yeah, it's none of your you, business maybe you want to be child free maybe yeah. you don't want to be monogamous like that is up to you yep. and i think that casting shame or judgment mm -hmm. on someone for not being at a certain stage of life by your standards. Exactly. It's kind of fucked up. It is. And it's it's shamey and blamey. Yep. And that is kind of yucky in a friendship. Yeah. And some I had to cut a bunch of people out because they were like, you know, whenever I was on a way different timeline than everybody else. So when friends of mine were like, Oh, are you gonna go back to college? Blah blah blah. Like really putting it on me like oh, you should be doing this, this, and this, but what are you going to do? Well, I was just like, I don't want to... it ends up being a comparison thing. Yeah, like, I am just... I supposed to? And in order for you to view that I have some amount of worth, do I need to take those steps? Exactly. Because why... And then I don't want to be around you now if I feel like I know that you feel that yeah. I, my life is like worth less than yours because I'm not doing things on your timeline. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that I had a friend who this really reminded me of just how I have been treated in the past by a friend. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I mattered. What I wanted mattered. Yep. And I couldn't keep making myself shrink yep. into this person that to keep was acceptable yeah. to exist within the guidelines of this friendship. Same. Same. Uh, and it's a tough thing to realize, especially if you're a close friend and you've been friends for a long time. It's like, you have to get to a place where you're like, I'm going to lay down my boundaries here. I'm going to lay down what I am able to offer. Yeah. And if that's not good enough, okay. Yeah. And also, then that's fine. You yep. can go find a friend who fulfills all of those needs. It's, it's not going to be gonna me. Be, yep. And, also, and there's nothing wrong with either one of us. You can place boundaries in place to be like, I know that you're going through things with your hormones, but I also don't deserve to be spoken to like that. So right. like if this is going to be a thing the whole time you're pregnant, then we just don't need to be around each other. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. And and sorry, but like that's I get it again. I've been pregnant a lot of times, yeah. but like and I've been kind of a bitch to not really to people, but well, mostly you don't to Corey. Get to, but. You don't get to just beat up on people. No, because, because you're going through yeah. a and lot And you of don't things. have to, as being the person who's like the human punching bag, you don't have to subject yourself nope. to it in order to be a good friend. Yeah, no. I would say not. that's the opposite of being a good friend because you're kind of enabling at yeah. that point. And yeah, yeah, exactly. You're letting that person think like, well, this is fine because she's letting me do it. So yeah, mm -mm. set those boundaries. Yeah. I am all for that. And also, you can have sex with whoever you want. That's what I was going to say, they're too. A, a consenting adults not in a relationship with another person, you, and even if they are, if that's fine with their partner, yep. you can have sex with whoever you want. I would say the only exception I would make to that is, like, if it was your friend's ex mm -hmm. or current partner, mm -hmm. like, that would be... If there were feelings, like, yeah. Yeah, that would be a tricky thing to navigate. And even so, like, I'm not saying... Don't pursue something that's meaningful to you because of your friend. But at the same time, I don't like the idea of people being off limits. Yeah. But there is a respect, I think, that, that yeah, you yeah. should have for that other person. But it, she's not going to have sex with her cousin. So I don't right. think that like <laughs> that. Right. Yeah. I don't think that that's going to be a, a problem. Like, no, were you, you going to fuck up? Like, is that why you're mad? <laughs> What's the issue here? I guess if, if it would be like awkward if you guys are all going to be around each other. But then like if that's the case, well, then you don't need to all hang out together. Well, they're not going to fuck in the middle of the room. <laughs> well, I mean, like if the situation hey, turns. Hey, <laughs> like, What? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know what? You're right. Yeah. No. So I understand you being weirded out and uncomfortable and like, hey, we're we're supposed to be friends. Like, I wish we would have been able to have this conversation. Right. It is going to be a little bit difficult for me to get used to. And again, that's going to be hard for someone to communicate when they're having lots of feelings. Right. But <laughs> because when they're having lots of sex <laughs> with their cousin. <laughs> but it is like, 
I don't know. I think it is their responsibility. So like, even if they do have a negative reaction off the cuff, yeah. like if they should be able to come around to it, I yeah. feel like everyone should be able to come around. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what us at Ladies in Pleasure always <laughs> say. <laughs> that is what we always say. <laughs> Get fucked forever. <laughs> what goes around comes. <laughs> That was good. Okay, okay. Am I the asshole for punching my mom in the face? Well, my name is Kim, she, they, and apologies in advance for the bad writing. So basically, one dark night, my mom and I were coming back from our laundry room that's kind of secluded and dark, super creepy at night. My mom went ahead of me to leave her basket of clothes in the room. I stayed behind trying to turn on my phone flashlight because it was too dark to walk. I don't know how my mom did it. I turn the corner to head to my bedroom when all of a sudden I see a dark figure in front of me making a weird growling sound. I screamed and punched it. I flashed the light in that direction and saw my mom holding her jaw because I had just punched her. And that weird growling sound was her burping. She was hella mad at me for punching her, but I didn't do it on purpose. You're not the asshole. You're not the asshole. You're not the asshole. I, I, I strike out of fear constantly. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's my first go-to. Mm-hmm. That's why I have to tell Noah, listen, you can't come into my bedroom at the middle of the night unannounced. You have to yeah. knock on the door or like say something. Because Make yourself known. He would just wait until he was this close to my face and then be like, hey, mom. And I would be like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> get punched. <laughs> no, yeah. I would never punch my kid. Yeah. Okay? Knowingly. <laughs> <laughs> he was asking for it. He was growling. <laughs> Just perps into my face. Yeah, so he wakes you up. <laughs> One time, he did come into my room because he was really sick. Mm. And I was like, it's okay, buddy. He scared the shit out of me, but whatever. So I'm on this side of the bed always. This is like my side. So he's standing right here. I go to lift him up to like pull him over to put him in my bed because mm. I didn't want to sit up and get out of bed. I'm like, you can come lay with mommy. And so as I'm doing this movement right up above my head, <gasps> He projected my oh into my, my face. Oh, my God. I was just going to say, like, I had a story about it, and I was going to give a trigger warning, so sorry that oh, it didn't get shit, to you sorry. guys before that. So trigger warning for um, puke. <laughs> but Too late. Sorry. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. Forrest the other night got really sick, like, mm-hmm. in the middle of the night, and didn't alert anybody. Like, I know that he's only one and a half. Like, he's, he's literally one and a half. And so, like, he can't speak he can't like open the door himself either like today he started just banging on the door (laughs) to tell us he was ready to come out we moved i think i said we moved him to his big boy bed but yeah he's in a floor bed funny story about that as well we he he doesn't like cry when he wants like when he's up Mm -hmm. he just like fucking hangs out until we come get him oh i love that (laughs) so like we always have to check the monitor to be like are you up or are you just like chilling we don't know (laughs) And the one time I turned it on and he was up and he saw the light on the camera turn on <laughs> and he just went, hi, and then held up his bottle because he like wanted a refill. Mommy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he did not do any of this. And I walked out of the bedroom and I'm like, why do I smell puke? Oh, no. I thought one of the dogs got sick. I'm searching the entire house trying to clean it up. And then Ollie's like, I hear Bubba. Can I go get him? And I said, sure, because Ollie will go in. Mm-hmm. He'll open the blinds, turn off the sound machine and go. Hi, Bubba. And it's the cutest fucking thing. Oh in the my world. God, that's how Noah gets way up. Hi, sissy. Oh. oh, it's adorable. So Ollie opens the door and I am just smacked in the face mm. with the smell of puke. And I'm like, fuck. And so I walk in and Forrest is just sitting there covered in his own vomit. And I'm like, how long have you been like this? Like, what? It's like, happened? I didn't want to bother you guys. Yeah, I don't mean to be that guy, but uh, puked all over my fucking bed. <laughs> so I got him into the bath and I was like, Shane, I'm going to need you to like get this because Birdie's trying to eat it. And like, mm-hmm. I just, I need some help. I need backup. And then, so I felt like a shit parent because I didn't know that my kid like vomited and slept yeah. in it all night. And then last night, Shane got Ollie ready for bed and he got like his milk ready and stuff. And then I said, do you want me to go read to him? And he goes, yeah, he's asking for you. He had a diaper in his hand at the time, like a dirty diaper. And I was like, oh, he must have already like changed him and stuff. I'll just take the milk in. So I take it in, read to him and then say goodnight. Not another peep until three in the morning where he's screaming at the top of his lungs that he peed. Who's this one? Ollie. Okay. I like that though. No. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I peed. I peed. And so he gets down 
off his bed and he has just peed through all of his clothes <gasps> because the diaper that Shane was carrying was not from Ollie. So I never changed him. Oh, and he went to no. bed in a full diaper and then had more milk yeah. and it fucking exploded his pull up. <laughs> oh, no. I know. I know. Oh, and then he was guy. up for another two hours and Shane and I were struggling. Yeah. Yeah. Rough. Anyway. So, anyways, are, are they the asshole? No, I would say no. Does your mom well. think you're an asshole? Because like, yeah, the, it says um, she was hella mad at me for punching her. Well, it doesn't feel good to be punched, no. but like <laughs> that, you know, honestly, honest mistake. Yeah, 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 yeah. What are you gonna do? That was you were set up for failure. Truly. I believe. Hi, ladies. My name is Alex. Twenty-two. He, they. I was diagnosed with ADHD in attentive type about eight months ago. Congratulations! Yes. I'm still learning a lot about my symptoms and how to manage them. One of my big things is not being able to be touched when I'm overstimulated. Mm. Yes, I feel that. I work in healthcare, so I'm pretty much always overstimulated when I get home from work every day. And one big issue I have when I feel like that is not when I feel like that is not being able to be touched. My fiance is a cuddler, which I love. Don't get me wrong. But I sometimes have to move him off me and explain that I can't be touched right now. And I know that it makes him sad. And I feel like it could cause a rift between us. Am I the asshole? And advice to ways to approach the situation without sounding bitchy or mean. Love you, ladies. No, I think it's you're not an asshole because it's super your body valid. Has yeah, it's a, a super reaction. valid. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like, and you're not the is, asshole because you you are taking his feelings into consideration right yeah. now over your own. I feel. Yeah, and something that it is very difficult though to find a way to validate someone else's feelings whilst like advocating for yourself yeah because i know that um physical touch is a love language and so it's yeah. very much like but also i think people thing. can feel like a sense of rejection when people set boundaries well, that's like what that. i mean yeah like yeah. if you say like because i i'm not gonna lie i've had to do that with Corey recently he gets home from being gone from work all day but i'm with the baby and she's literally on my body especially when i was like full-time breastfeeding yeah. because she was touching me or on top of me all the time. Then Noah would get home and he would want to sit really close to me or like be constantly yep. talking, which overstimulates me as well. But I can't like, I don't want yeah. him to stop talking. So it's just like those two things all day long. And then Corey will come home and like, he's very wants to get close, big bear hugs yeah. with all of us lays down right beside me in bed. And I'm like, I love you, but you have to get off of me. Like yeah. I am touched out. And that's what I say. Mm -hmm. I say like, I love you. I am so touched out for the day. Like, can I just have a little breathing room? And he did get like upset about it for the first couple of times, but now he doesn't even do it because he just understands. Yeah. And then I'll be like, we can cuddle. Like I'll give him well, the green light. Well, that's what I was going to say is like, I don't know if you have, um, I don't know if this would be helpful, but timers are a big thing. Yes. Like if it's, uh, how do I explain this? So with my students or with my toddler, like with anything, if I don't know, it's almost like if you don't know how many miles you're running, mm -hmm. you just think that you're running for a really it's long like there's time. There's no end in sight. Yeah. You don't know where the and finish it line panics. is. It's, it's like a panicky feeling. Yes. Because yes. it feels like it's never going to come. Yeah. So when you set a timer or you set like clear parameters. Yeah, that is it helps people. So mm -hmm. I don't know if you coming home saying like, hey, I need whatever amount of time is good for you. Half an hour, an hour, whatever. I need thir I need 30 minutes. I'll set it on the timer on the Alexa when we get home. Yeah. And then after that, oh, baby, we go into Cuddle Town. Yeah. And maybe and you can even set Cuddle a timer Town. there. Yeah. yeah. Cuddle Town has a timer as well. <laughs> <laughs> Timed yeah. cuddles. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, that's that's a really good thing. I because think that, then your partner can feel like, I want to do this. I yeah. want to be able to do this with you. It matters to me. For I want you. to do this for you, for us. Yeah. But I, I need to do it in a way where I'm not feeling suffocated Like or a negative feeling because you yeah. want that feeling to be like one of love and that's yeah. why people cuddle. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure your fiance, right? Is that fiance? Uh -huh. Okay. I'm sure your fiance gets that because they don't want to make you feel a negative feeling. I'm sure that's what I had to like explain to Corey. And he was like, I don't want to make you feel bad. I'm like, I know you don't. Like, that's why I'm saying I don't want to yeah. feel these things. So if we just have like, if I get a breather, then I won't feel like because feelings like that you can't really control well and i was gonna say 
most likely if your partner is having a negative response to you setting that boundary, it's probably because it's a trigger for them. Yeah. It's probably something that rejection. they felt rejection rejection in the past yeah in regards to physical touch either from a caregiver or yep. past partners and um maybe it was used as like um an unfortunate like manipulation tactic yeah or a punishment and so that can lead them to a negative feeling but like the other day i shane and i one day sat down and we were like let's go back and forth and say things to one another that we would like the other to either start doing, stop doing, whatever, just to say like, hey, how can I better serve you right. day to day? And one of the things that I said to him was like, you make yourself a coffee in the morning and that's fine. I'm not expecting you to make my coffee, but it would be nice if you filled the water up every once right, in a while because right, like, right, right. I'm always filling it. Yeah. Well, the other day he made a coffee and then I saw the water was low. Love Island has ruined me that I'm like, Corey, where's my fucking coffee (laughs) every morning while I'm getting ready? But anyways, go on. I filled the coffee up again. Yeah. And he immediately went into this. I was going to do it. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because when he was growing up. If you were told you have to do this and you forgot or. Or he didn't do it on the timeline Mm -hmm. when it was. It was met with a negative response. So like, like I had to say to him like it's it's okay i'm not mad at you i don't feel like rejected i feel like i'm not feeling like you don't care about me i just i saw it needed done so i did it i don't i don't care i'm not it's just something that if you could remember to do it from time to time that would be helpful to me it's not like i'm going to hate you if you don't yep it's fill up the fucking coffee maker i swear to god we're done no (laughs) it's not like that so i feel like maybe ask when you're having this conversation with your partner, maybe they won't even react. Yeah. And if they do, it just might be that they experience something negative and you have an opportunity to help them work through that yeah, by ask, giving like, them. Why Why do you feel like this is a negative thing that I'm, you know, yeah. towards you? And also, I think explaining it exactly the way you explained it to us works. And um, if because I know some people like I have two. Like physical touch is a long love language for me, but it's like my second one. My biggest one is like quality time, yeah. intentional time together. Um, and so maybe your partner has like another thing that they would really enjoy. So for the 30 minutes that you're not touching, you can have a deep conversation. You could watch like uh, something together. You could go on a walk. Yeah. Have time together in a different way that's not touching. Yep. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hope that helps. Yeah. Alex's partner, are you listening? How do you feel? <laughs> yeah. Do you think they're an asshole? <laughs> do you think you are? <laughs> Write us in. <laughs> no one's the asshole. No, I agree. Whoever no assholes hurt here. Alex's partner. Yeah. They're the asshole. And so is ADHD. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're an asshole. <laughs> We're going to do a trigger warning for this next one for um, fat phobia is one. And then also for just like um, maybe... Body shaming? Yeah, and unhealthy parent relationships. Okay. Because if there's some people that are going through it right now, I understand wanting to skip and not get triggered by. Okay. Hi, ladies. Let's say my name is Allie, pronouns she, her. My mother, imagine Mother Gothel from Tangled, was so strict in high school. For example, I was always told I was fat for wearing yoga pants while working out, grounded over talking to guys I liked, but she didn't. Um, So she didn't, the mom didn't like the guys, but. Hardly able to have any friends over that weren't a strong member of the religion we were, etc. Mm-hmm. Well, one of her main rules was that I couldn't go on a date with just a guy and no one else. No multiple dates with the same person. That one is weird to me because I'm like, so you could go on multiple dates with different people, but not. So you couldn't <laughs> establish and develop a like, like deeper loving, combination, deep relationship. combination? <laughs> deeper connection with relationship. Someone? Yeah. No, absolutely can't do it. Service level with everybody. Because then you might have intercourse. (laughs) Oh. You know? If you get in my heart, you'll get in my jeans. (laughs) That's what we say, ladies of pleasure. pleasure. (laughs) You're getting my chocolate starfish. (laughs) Send your loved one a package of chocolate starfish. (laughs) Starfishes? Starfishies? I like starfish better. Yeah, me too. Um, And that I couldn't have a boyfriend. Well, now that I've been out of high school for several years and moved away... I did this one specifically for you and I, by the way. My younger sister is now the same age that I went through all of this. 
That sister now has a boyfriend who is over every night and she will often wear yoga pants to school. I pointed this out to my mom and tried to have a conversation, but she immediately started to play the victim card and that I was just unmanageable. Am I the asshole? I'm the oldest too, so I get that I'm kind of the guinea pig, but it's hard to receive no validation from a lot of childhood trauma. When I say I did this for us, it's because as oldest siblings, I think we can relate a lot to being like treated way differently differently than our siblings. Oh, my God. The things that I was like, no, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And then my sister was like living her best life. And even my younger sisters after that was even more so like, what? Like I was never Mm -hmm. allowed to do those things. Yeah. And I think the problem with that is. Because it it is very hard when there's different treatment amongst siblings Mm -hmm. when the response to why am I receiving this treatment in the first place is because I said so. Yes. If you explain to me the real reason why you're saying no, or if you even know what it is, then I could understand why after... Time has passed. Mm-hmm. Society has changed. Why you may have a different set of rules for someone else. Yep. But when you say because I said so. Or that's just the way it is. Then it's just like, well, it's the way it is for you. Yep. But not the way that it is for that person. And then okay, it makes it what, feel like, what is it about me? Yes. That yes. made it so that I couldn't live the life that they are able to live. Right. And that, and it's hard when you grow up in a family system where control is like the main form of like the center of the relationship. And so like you don't get an explanation for anything and you just have to obey. Yeah. And you're now looking for validation from someone else. I was just talking to my mom about this yesterday and she was saying that she's one of eight And she said she always just wanted a bigger piece of the pie that my grandma had had one pie and divided it Mm -hmm. into equal parts for all her kids. And she just wanted a bigger piece of the pie Mm -hmm. and she was trying to get it and she just never did. Right. And I said to her, well... I don't care if you give me pie. Yeah. (laughs) I don't care what size the slice is. I make my own pie. Right. So like I, I don't need anyone else's validation. I don't need you to tell me that I have your approval or that you, uh, I've met your expectations. Great. Cool. Thanks. But the only one that matters is mine. Exactly. And I think it's important for me now, and Shane and I were talking about this, that I want to teach my kids how to make their own pie. I'm not trying to divide it and give them slices. And I'm not trying to say, oh, Ollie, this is just the way it is. I want him to understand why why we do things and why maybe I change my mind about something Mm -hmm. and let him when it comes to be mad about it. Yeah. You want to be angry about it? Totally. That is unfair. That is unfair. And and you even said this the other day with children who are very close together. Like you expected so much more out of Ollie than you would for Forrest right now because Ollie had to grow up quicker because you had to have your eyes on another Mm -hmm. little person at the time and now it's just like well Forrest gets to be the baby a little bit longer because you know he's the baby yep there's no one coming after yeah that's why we got birdie yeah (laughs) so (laughs) Forrest can can understand (laughs) yeah but it is I think that's like an important thing because unfortunately I feel like there's always going to be yeah dynamics when it comes to like order like sibling Mm -hmm. order and like I expect more out of Noah than I probably ever will for Sawyer just because like he's the well there is a pretty significant age gap between there is. them I think like for you and I and for Ollie and Forrest who have like but we had months. to grow up very quickly yeah and it was like you're older you know better barely but I'm like <laughs> 16 and 18 months older yeah. was what yep. we had barely. not that much yeah, yeah. like and I'm so- still I'm still a toddler I'm still literally toddling around yeah. by the time now I have to know better yep so yeah I um I don't think you're the asshole for being frustrated no not at all I don't think you're the asshole for feeling um invalidated or for 
being annoyed at the rules that were set on you and feeling controlled. Like those are all very normal things yeah. that like you're going to have to work through. Yeah. Your mom is probably never, never gonna going ch- no. to see it your way. Acknowledge it. No. And you don't need her to. Nope. Start baking your own pie, baby girl. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Very nice. Hi, ladies. Definitely don't want to include my name because I may be the asshole. (laughs) But anywho, my best friend is dating this guy. He's meh. He isn't a bad guy, but he could definitely be better. He doesn't listen to her needs emotionally, sexually, relationship wise. Sexually? Yeah. It's probably all about him. Act like you don't know the people we dated in high school. Or Remember I said I just dry humped the guy and got (laughs) off. I don't. That's what we say. Ladies and (laughs) pleasure. Just dry hump them and get off. Yeah. Yeah, you did always kind of do your own thing. I was not. I, I was know. always trying to be a people pleaser. I had no fucking clue what I was supposed to do. All I knew is that I when I looked at a penis, I wanted to throw up. I was like, <laughs> absolutely no with that near my face. <laughs> and I was very transparent with Shane when we got together. Like, I was that's like, not hey, going near my face. I don't shower often and I don't give head. So if those are deal breakers for you. Bye. <laughs> I love that for you. <laughs> oh, but some people aren't as nice as Shane and they try to pressure you mm. into doing things or they just don't care. And then you like love every other aspect of them, but like sexually it could be better. So people, all people out there, but I'm specifically talking to certain kind of people, <laughs> be receptive to your partner's needs. It's yeah. not all about you. I saw a meme one time that was like girls who do that fucking uh like they're scooting their chair and move during sex like what are you doing and it's like getting off you fucking are you serious it's not like the guy was like yeah. that doesn't feel good for us well it's not for you yeah <laughs> like, it's for us that feels good for the other the chair and move <laughs> i love that right? i never heard that okay but like that's not for you yeah. i'm sure it doesn't feel good and i, I actually gotta go had, sit on the chair i had an ex-partner tell me that oh oh um if my parents are listening <laughs> my mom told me she's like you could have told me to skip this part and that oh. hey i'm 30 don't listen to this part <laughs> anyways i had a partner one time that said that to me they were like hey that doesn't really feel like great for me when you do that not that it felt bad it's just like not, not doing it for me and i was like yeah it's not for, but but I was young and dumb, so I yeah. was like, "Oh, I'm so sorry." Which what, what should I go up and down? <laughs> like, what do I do? What do you want to do? What can I do to make this your experience, <laughs> yeah. the best experience for you? Yeah. And then as I got older, I was like, "Why did I do that so much?" Oh, because it feels fucking great for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, sex is for two people, not for one. And if you think it's just for you, it's not. Yeah. Okay. That's what we say at Ladies and Pleasure. <laughs> Get fucked forever. Buy our dildos. <laughs> We're going to like murder that joke by the end. I don't give I a don't shit. <laughs> Hear it from Tastic. <laughs> Hear it from Tastic Dildos. <laughs> we are taking you to Pleasure Town. <laughs> Hop on a chocolate starfish and follow me. Scoot that chair this way. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh. Okay, okay. Strap in or on. <laughs> I love it. Honestly, we should do this. Hey, 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 buddy. If there's one thing that my grandma would have loved, it's for her granddaughter's <gasps> self sex to become sex toy em- yeah. empresses. Right? <gasps> Emperor's Empire. new sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a llama. Oh my god, a llama. Honestly, it's that would be a hot. llama. <laughs> it just spits. <laughs> Do you have it? That and the billy goat. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look, we have this all worked out. God damn. Okay, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm not. You're welcome. Yeah, you are. (laughs) Um, Recently, (laughs) we gotta get back into it. So, guy doesn't listen to our needs. Oh my god, I where didn't are we know at? <laughs> Sorry, okay, yeah. you're at the beginning. <laughs> Very much so. 
Um, recently she went through a traumatic loss and he just pushed her feelings to the side saying he didn't understand her depression and anxiety. Then that night claimed he had another, oh, sorry, claimed that he had an anxiety attack. Recently, she has been complaining to me about him daily. And my response is, well, have you told him this or does he know you feel this way? And she always says, no, I'm feeling like the punching bag for her relationship when things are rough, when she doesn't tell him how she feels. I'm to the point where I almost refuse to give advice because I know she won't even speak her mind to him. I know he isn't abusing her. She is just frustrated. This is a very long-term relationship and some of the issues are as simple as just rude comments. Mm. So I get, I understand where this person is coming from, I think, because it is, I've had someone just almost like, um, not trauma dumping, but kind of just like using me as like the, and, and honestly, throwing those negative like emotions I don't want to say like vibes and stuff, but honestly, like throwing that negative energy just to be like, oh, glad I got that out. Bye. It like makes me as a person feel bad. Yeah. I've had multiple friends do that when they stay. They stay in a negative relationship and I will be like, how can I help you? How can I best support you? Blah, blah, blah. They don't want to do anything to get out of it. But then they also will just like throw up all over me with their the terrible things that their partner is doing which number one now is triggering to me and number two is just like it's emotionally draining it is it is draining you are taking up time in my day i'm now worrying about you i'm now trying to figure out a way that i can best help you and support you as a friend it is a, a lot and it is okay to feel exhausted by that i yeah. don't think you're the asshole i don't either at all yeah and i i'm not saying that your friend is the asshole i think that your friend and her partner are probably not in a healthy relationship yeah. and could Be- probably benefit definitely from counseling yeah. or therapy like so we'd like to talk to you about talks no, <laughs> no but, but but truly honestly you need to direct that to a licensed professional who is paid to take in those emotions and and yep. can also help navigate so that you're not just like venting is one thing but you also have to understand when you're doing that to a person like you are just like basically being like here's all this like Think of it like a backpack full of rocks. Yeah, and you're and like, I'm here like, to carry this now. Can you hold these? Because it's getting a little bit heavy for and then me. And you're like, thanks, it's so light hey, now. have you thought of maybe arranging them like this and presenting them to your partner? And you're like, I just thought you'd maybe hold on. I just wanted you to take these because now yeah. my backpack's a lot lighter. Thank you so, so I much. So I fit more in there and I'll be back <laughs> yeah, like, later. Yeah. And then you're laying there under all the freaking rocks. Yeah. So I don't think you're the asshole at all. Um, I think that it's going to be tough for you. I think that you need to set a boundary. Yeah, set a boundary, figure out how you want I had to, to s- continue this relationship. And if you do mm-hmm. and if your friend isn't willing to um respect those boundaries, then you don't have to be anyone's sounding board. No, I had or, to set a boundary. What's it like a dumping ground? Yeah. Don't let your friend take a dump on you. No. <laughs> but if you want to, you can come over to Ladies and <laughs> we We've will. got the cleanest plexiglass <laughs> in town. Ooh. <laughs> um, so I had to do that with a friend. Not the dumping. <laughs> I had to get shit underneath on- and shit on my friend. No. You um, got underneath and shit? <laughs> <laughs> my f- Let's shit go back up. there. <laughs> Upward. Oh, okay. It's like a volcano. Wow. <laughs> All right. You know, and I'm like, check out this Picasso. <laughs> Anyways, I had to do this with a friend from Suvius. Am I right? <laughs> Sorry. I had to do this with a friend where I was like, hey, um, you've been talking to me about your toxic relationship for like as long as I've known you. Mm-hmm. You are not going to leave. That's right. become apparent, but it keeps getting worse. And now I've. I've left and and what you're talking about is triggering to me. So I love you. If you need help, if you want support, if you need to leave, I got you. I cannot be the person you talk about this stuff to anymore because you're not going to leave. And I get that. And that's your decision. Fine. But I cannot be the person that you come to anymore because it is like yeah physically affecting me emotionally affecting me and i don't deserve that either Mm -hmm. i'm not the one that made this choice it's your choice to stay and i get as someone who's been in an abusive relationship that it's very hard to leave i fucking get that but also you don't get to subject other people to that toxicity yeah we just talked about last week it's not their choice to be in it it's like secondhand trauma yes in a way yeah because i know like even from our situation yeah it was 
so fucking hard yep. to watch you go through that mm-hmm. and not be able to do anything. Mm-hmm. And as much as it was one of the worst things ever to not speak to you for a year, yeah, it was like, this is what you has didn't to wanna, happen. Yeah, you didn't want to hear what was happening. Trust me. No, and, and I, I wasn't and ready I didn't to even leave step away. Yeah, because that so it wouldn't have been beneficial for either one of us, right? Because well, and at that point too, it wasn't even like you were telling me it was no. something you were hiding. Yeah, but I knew. Yeah, and I didn't want to know anymore. Well, and I didn't want you to lie either. Yeah. I didn't want you to have to have Put two lives. You know. Yeah. Like. I knew that it wasn't safe for someone to know the truth. Yeah. So I was just like, okay, if this is what you need to do is create this this boundary, like, all right. But same thing you said, like, I'm here. Yeah. No matter what, whenever you're ready. But I also understand that, like, when you're in a shit situation, you have to do whatever you need to do yeah. to get to tomorrow. So, And I'm not saying that this this situation is, like, to that level but at the same time emotional abuse emotional neglect yeah. like that is also damaging and it does take a toll on a person absolutely so, yeah yeah well so i think that's gonna be that that's the that on your chocolate starfishes <laughs> yeah <laughs> at least for this we're also going to do more on patreon yeah so if you like these and you want more we're going to be sharing one of these on our patreon on friday They, them pronouns, Mm -hmm. please. Okay. So my freshman year of college, I was paired up with a girl who was dating someone at a neighboring school. This would have been fine, except they had started dating when he was a junior in college and she a senior in high school, which felt icky. Speaking from experience, if an actual adult is dating a literal child, it's not because they think you're special and mature for your age, but because everyone their age knows that they're gross and they probably get off on the power imbalance that they hold over you. Preach. Yes. Very, very true. Thank you for stating that. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Also, he was... This is also he was a commuter. I thought said he was a computer. This man was a computer. I thought you were gonna say he was a communist. Also, he was a communist. No, he was a computer. (laughs) Good, that's better. This meant that he didn't have his own dorm. Instead, he frequently stayed the night in our dorm room. That would piss me off to no end. Just imagining her with a computer. This is my boyfriend. <laughs> Snuggly with her laptop. This is Dell. <laughs> um, my roommate was good about giving a heads up when he might come over, but there was almost. But my he, roommate was good at giving head. <laughs> in the end, to do that's it's Adele. the story. <laughs> Um, about when he might come over, but he was there almost every weekend, sometimes weekdays, which got to be a little much. A college dorm room barely has enough space for my existential dread, let alone three people. Also, he laughed like a billy goat. <laughs> uh, this next sentence is good. <laughs> I'm going to let you swallow. What does a billy goat sound like? What I mean by this, ladies, is that Mr. Tumnus over here would <laughs> tilt his head back, open his mouth, stick out his tongue, and blah! No, <laughs> no, 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 straight to jail! You can imagine the out-of-body experience I had as my eyes crap up. <laughs> <laughs> Butt sneeze, out my eyes! <laughs> I shit out of my eye holes as my <laughs> eyes crack open, heavy with sleep, and the first thing I'm confronted with is this satyr man <laughs> in twink form. Really makes you question the meaning of life when your eyes and ears are assaulted like that on the daily. Also, once in the year that I was living this in this purgatory, <laughs> I arranged for my long-distance girlfriend to come and stay for a few days. My roommate agreed to be out of the room for the first night so my girlfriend and I could get freaky in peace. Hell yeah. That's what I'm saying. Quick side note. It sure do be hard to do some oral <laughs> oral horal <laughs> when y'all on a lofted twin XL. In case of emergency landing, wear a helmet. Anyways, the next morning I had to pee, so I slid down from my stupid tower of peril, and as my foot hit the floor, I heard the door handle turn. We'd fallen asleep after doing the fucking last night. (laughs) 
So I was very naked. I panicked and tried to hop back into bed. But as I said, our school has chosen some stupid tall bed frames and I needed a running start. I'm 5'10", not a small person, so this was ridiculous. I felt like Mufasa trying to scramble up the side of my mouth. <laughs> so I could get my bare ass under the covers <laughs> before my roommate came in. My girlfriend was also naked and asleep, so I couldn't just yank the covers off of her. Unfortunately, though, I briefly considered it. <laughs> in the end, my roommate got a fantastic view of my ass and a slightly obstructive view of my pre-top surgery titas in return. And in return, she learned to knock. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm just so glad that the billy goat wasn't with her. <laughs> No. Could you imagine the door opens and then you just hear hooves <laughs> and you're like, no, <laughs> <laughs> not the billy goat. Oh, it's oh. so bad. Here to gnaw on your titas. <laughs> That's what I'm for. Horrific. For? <laughs> you okay? No. <laughs> and you yeah. can find that at www. <laughs> www. W- Did I say www. Oh my god, <laughs> that's an issue of mine. There's only two W's in my mind. Anyway, well, it's. <laughs> I was just. I was yeah. just said something. <laughs> Patreon.com slash ladies and tangents. There you go. Um. Yeah, and you can be a sad bitch, uh, uh, a fuckable bunny, or a goose pimp. Yep. Um. And then also, do you want to shout out our other things? Follow us on at Ladies and Tangents um, at Instagram or TikTok. Yeah. It, we also have a Twitter, uh, but I, I don't think it's at Ladies and Tangents. No, it's like Ladies Find underscore Tangents. Tree. I don't know. Here's the thing. Please go follow us because I'm trying to get verified on these bitches <gasps> and they're like not letting us. So if you haven't yeah. followed us on Instagram, especially like go follow us because I don't know what else I have to yeah. do. Instagram. What do you want from me? Yeah. To be verified. Suck. Yeah. Because <laughs> we talked about you one fucking time. Someone talked about, <laughs> yeah, remember when he was, uh, because I was human, that one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I am human, still. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that someone was, attacked us in a TikTok where they were talking about how we go, ow. <laughs> They said it was oh fuck. What See, was that's one of those things that my partner told me he absolutely hates that I do, and it only fueled me to do it more. Yeah, not around him because I'm not a dick, but I'm my own person, so leave me alone. If I like to do it, I'm going to do it. It's the Lady Bits and Giggles. I think they're a podcast, but they <laughs> they said jokingly dirty licking is what they called like. <laughs> you know when they go like. But they were trying to make the sound and they were really struggling. And they're like, you know, when they're jokingly dirty licking. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what this is called. Yeah. So anyways, find us at ladiesinpleasure.com. <laughs> yeah. Where everyone comes. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, th- that's um, the, that on your yeah, that's, assholes. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's this, guys. Um, Hope you... Had a great time. We love you so much. Uh, we will see you next week. Yes. Wait. All right. We're out? <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. Fuck. We love you so much. We'll see you next week. All right. We're out. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>